This is 15 Minutes to Freedom. I'm your host, Ryan Nidell, and today's episode is You Can't Have the Shit Without the Shine. In today's episode, I want to share with you what is so impactful about what we give credit to. So in full disclosure, this is not necessarily my individual unique thought. What I'm going to share today with you is a principle that was taught to me by Tony Robbins. Now, he has a different way of phrasing it, of course, so I'm stealing like an artist currently. I'm going to take something that I learned from somebody else, I'm going to put my own spin on it, and then I'm going to share it. And the story I want to share with you is the fact of for longer than I can remember, I used to give immense shit to the world about my father. Yes, when I say that out loud, I used to say all the negative things my father had done to me. Now, in full transparency, I believe we all have a cognitive bias or cognitive dissonance, which we see life through the lens in which we've experienced it. By the sheer nature of that very fact, I don't know how bad of a father he really was. In fact, I can go back in time periods and remember he was a phenomenal father. In so many time periods. But the story that I used to run in the background was that he was never around, which is truthful, right? What happened was when my father wanted to produce at a higher level and wanted us as a family to have more than we had, we moved. We moved from East Aurora, New York to Mansfield, Ohio. No sooner did we move to Mansfield than we went on a family vacation to a little lake called Chautauqua Lake in uh, like the New York, Pennsylvania border. From that position, we were there for a week. That was the same time that Hurricane Andrew hit South Dade, Florida. We returned home to a message on our answering machine. Yes, if you're younger listening to this, we used to have devices that were square boxes that had to plug into our home phone. And that was the only way someone could get a hold of us. Right, this move happened prior to the internet. This happened prior to cell phones. This happened prior to so many conveniences that we know today. So when Hurricane Andrew hit, it destroyed the cable system of South Dade, Florida. My father was called by the owner of the company at that point, a company called Adelphia Cable, and was asked to go down to South Dade to help rebuild that cable system. Now at that point, as an eight-year-old young man, I'd really call me a child, a boy, I had no concept of what Hurricane Andrew really was. I had no concept of the devastation that it existed. I had no concept of what my father was going through. All that I knew is the man that I used to go to work with on Saturdays that promised me that we were moving to Mansfield, Ohio so that he wouldn't travel anymore was immediately traveling. And he wasn't just traveling, right? It wasn't a thing in which he was traveling for an hour or a day or two, to rebuild a cable system like that after such catastrophic devastation, I believe he was down there for the better part of two years. And when he would come home, again, I had no concept for the death that he had seen, the destruction that he had seen, the long hours. And none of that mattered to me as a child. All that I wanted was my dad there I wanted my dad to be present. I wanted him to love me. I wanted him to be at my sporting events. I wanted the relationship that we had been building in East Aurora. I wanted that in Mansfield, and I didn't get it. Now, I understand as a father now what it means to produce and provide. I get the fact of being called by the owner of a company, and that ended up propelling my father into the ranks of vice president of Adelphia Cable. He started out climbing telephone poles. Right? That's where his career started. The bottom of the bottom. All he cared about was providing a better life for us, my mother, my sister, and myself, than he had experienced himself. Maybe some of this sounds familiar to you. So much of what I'm doing now is doing everything I can to provide Gianna, my bonus daughter, although I refer to her as my daughter. I want to provide her a better life than I experienced. If you yourself have kids, I'm sure you get it, right? You want to do everything you can to provide that better life. 
But in such an effort to provide the better life, my father lost sight of what really mattered, as he would tell you today. The family. And so my father wasn't around. And my father eventually, when he did come home, he was mad and he was angry and he was tired and he was aggressive. Because during that time, my father had bouts with depression. My father had bouts with anxiety. He didn't like to fly, so he would drive from Mansfield, Ohio to South Dade, Florida, back and forth when he would come home to see us. These are all things, again, that I didn't take notice of, right? They weren't important to me because I was a child and it it wasn't what I was thinking. Then eventually, if you've been a listener for quite some time, you realize my parents get divorced and some different things go on and, and life takes its own turns. But for years and years and years, I gave credit for the shit of my life to my father. I would have looked at you dead in the eye and said he was never around. He didn't really love us. He was mean. He was aggressive. He was both verbally and physically tough. That's a story. And still to this day, I would tell you that's the truth. That's the truth of my memory and what I store this as. And I would openly share that. I have podcasts in which I've shared that, shared that with you before. But what I don't share then is the fact that giving him credit for that much negativity and how bad he made my life, I never stopped to give him credit for the shine. The shine that is who I am today. You see, I fully realized without that example, without what was created by my father, I would not have the work ethic in its entirety that I have today. I realized without seeing my father do what he did and be as present and then not as present as he was, I wouldn't have been able to access the part of me that realizes I have to shut all this down and be there for my family. I have to be there for my family because they matter to me and because I don't want to end up the way that my father ended up. Now, granted, my father since has remarried an incredible woman, is incredibly happy, has a great life for himself, and him and I have a completely different relationship. But it was so easy for me for so long to say, like, you did all this stuff to me. And maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But I never sat down and said to him, look, Dad, but because you did all this, That's actually driven me to do what I do today. The shine, the greatness that is me is because of you doing what you did. You see, I believe we all have a soul's purpose. We have something inside of us that's driving us to do something more. Very easily, my soul purpose, it gets derived from typically the person, the mother or father in your life that you were searching for the most love from, i.e. the one you might not have gotten it from. Well, for me, it's no secret. It was my father, right? I had this great relationship with my father and then no relationship with my father. And that carried on all throughout however long it carried out. So I was seeking the love of my father. And then what were the top two emotions that I was actually seeking from him? Well, I wanted love and I wanted to be heard. That's what I wanted. One, it's not that I don't have access to that now. It's not that I don't have that present. But in the formative years of my childhood and adolescence, what I was seeking on a, on a core level, somewhere deep inside my soul and inside my psyche, I was not receiving. So what do I do? As an adult now, I finally begin to tap into my purpose. And my purpose is then to pay it forward and to love others and to make sure they feel heard. That's why coaching comes so easy for me. Because I love you when I speak to you. I have a place in my heart for you specifically. And all I'm set out to do is to make sure that you're heard. I'm not set to judge. I'm not set to criticize. I'm set to show you different perspectives and different angles that you might not be able to see from the level of life in which you're playing. It doesn't mean I've done something better. It means I have something different. But all of this is not possible without the shit that happened in my childhood. All the shit that I used to dump over and over again. This is my dad. This is my dad, right? Think about you. Think of how many stories you've told about whether inside your head, whether it's rattling around in your psyche or whether it's to your spouse, to your friends. Think of all the things that you've shared that were negative. But have you ever stopped to think 
what happened, all those things built on top of each other created the person you are today? I hadn't until I became aware that that was what was actually driving my decisions. And at some point, I sat down with my father across the dining room table and shared with him the pain and frustration and the hurt that I'd carried around for so long based off what he had done, quote unquote, to me. I didn't ask for feedback from him. I didn't look for answers from him. I just had to get it out from my soul. He had to hear it from me. And in having him hear it from me and be able to feed back to me his version of why and how things happened, it became more clear. I was able to see a different perspective. But once he finished that, then I was able to reframe yet once more and sit across that same dining room table from him in the same conversation in the same evening and tell him thank you for those same things I hated him for. I told him thank you because without those things happening, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. And as much as I used to hold hate in my heart for him based off what he did, I now had the same, if not more, love inside my heart for creating me as the man you see in front of you. So I must ask you, where in your life are you not giving someone credit for the shine when you've given them credit for the shit? Maybe it's in your body, right? That you, you're you leaning into your parents because they didn't have healthy food for you at the house when you were young and they didn't know what they know about diets. And it's, maybe it's forced you now to start to really analyze your life and what you're capable of. It's forced you to start to pick apart the food you put in your mouth and go to the gym and make some new decisions. And instead of sitting there every time on the way into the gym blaming your parents for what's happened, you should call them and tell them thank you because now you get to be healthy and you have new knowledge based off of their decisions. Maybe it's inside of your relationship. Maybe you were always hoping for something different than you received from one of your parents and you used to always dump on them of how bad it was because they got divorced. But here you are getting the opportunity to date and go out and flourish in the adult world knowing that you can learn from their mistakes, learn from the things that you don't want from your life that they had in theirs and live a more fulfilled existence. Call and tell them thank you. Give them credit for the shine you're about to put on the world. And if it's none of those and it just pertains to business where I used to give tons of angst to my father for how hard he worked without ever giving him credit for the fact that he instilled that same work ethic in me. Because what I found is 100% of the time when you can reevaluate why you're giving people shit and you can start to focus over on then what that shit ends up being as far as a shine. Once you establish that and you can own it in your soul. Every day after, you're able to get shit done.